Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for T's. We have been solving T's math problem out of this book here, the T's official study guide, version 7, 2025. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure that this book is in front of you when we are working together. Today is our lesson number 18. We are on page 109. On page 109 you will find some word problem dealing with percentages. There are five problems there as you can see there. We did four of them yesterday. We skipped one, problem number four. That's the one we're going to do today. But before we do that problem, number four, problem number four, before we do that problem, and even though what we are about to talk is not, necessary, is not actually necessary to know, in order for us to solve the problem, because that problem will involves a long, uh, involves a division, which we, we which we could have very easily done uh, by the method of long division, uh, and gotten our answer. Long division would have just worked fine. But having said all that, the things that I want to talk about in this video, those are simple things, but that yet they come in very handy in the exam uh, to understand. Let's talk about it. The concept that we that I'm that that we're going to discuss today is is what is known as divisibility divisibility rules. If a number is given to us, how can we tell just by looking at it, just by looking at it a quick second, how can we tell is it going to go evenly into a 2 or a 3 or a 4 or a 5? That's what we're going to talk about. So, divisibility rules, question is how do we know if a number is divisible by let's say 2? How can we tell just by looking at it if the given number is divisible by 2? And the answer is a number is divisible by 2 if and here's the rule. If, if the last digit, last digit is even. That's all you have to do. Just we have to look at the uh, last digit. And as long as the last digit is even, the number is divisible by 2. For example, for example, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1. I did a very good job, didn't I? I skipped the 4. So, for example, if somebody gives us 12,356, is 12,356 divisible by 2? The answer is yes, because the last digit is 6 and 6 is even. How about 9876543? How about 9,876,543? Is that number divisible by 2? The answer is no, it is not divisible by 2 because it ends in a 3 and 3 is an odd number. As long as the last digit is even, it does not matter what comes before it, this number number would be divisible by 2 as long as the last digit is 2. The last digit is even rather. The reason why you only look at the last digit is because this digit represents the tens. This is 40 and of course 40 is divisible by 2. This is 500, of course 500 is divisible by 2. This is 6000 and of course 6000 is divisible by 2. So anything that comes after the unit digits, we don't have to worry about it because they are all divisible by 2. Because they are all multiple of ten, multiples of 10. It's only the last digit that plays the role. Here's the next one. How do we, do, how, how do we tell if a given number is going to be divisible by 3? How do we tell by looking at it if the given number is divisible by 3? Here's the rule. The rule is that if the sum, SUM sum, of the digits is divisible by 3. This is a very nifty one. This comes in handy quite a lot. Let's take a look at the example. I'm going to do it on the top because we need the room. Let's take a... I'm just going to make up number just like, just like we did a second ago. Well, let's start with something simple. How about 18? Is 18 divisible by 3? It's a very simple number, of course, we know is divisible by 3. But the rule says that if you want to figure out if 18 is divisible by, by 3, all we have to do is add up the digits. 1 plus 8, 1 plus 8 is 9, and 9 is divisible by 3. So 18 is divisible by 3, which of course we knew it. How about, how about 2118? Is that number divisible by 3? The answer is yes. Because all we have done is that instead of, instead of a 1 and an 8, we also have another 1 and another 2 and of course that's also 3. 
So 3 plus 9 is 12, and 12 is divisible by 3. So just by looking at it, 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 8, and that's 4 plus, that's 12. 12 is divisible by 3. Right away we can tell that 2108 is divisible by 3. How about this number? Uh, let's make up something simple here. But there is a year here, 2000, 2025. Is 2025 divisible by 3? Let's find out, shall we? 2 plus 2 is 4, 4 plus, 4 plus 5 is 9. There you go, the sum of the digits is 9. 2000, 2025 is divisible by 3 and so forth and if you don't believe me you can just do it out and you will see that it is divisible by 3 2000 is divisible by 3 we're going to do it 6 times which is 18 it's going to bring the 2 down we bring this 2 down it's going to go 7 times that's going to give us 21 you're going to have a 1 we're going to bring the 5 down and that's going to give us 5 there we go but we didn't have to do it out, we can just tell by looking at it, it is divisible by 3 because some of the digit happens to be 9. Let's do the next one. How do we tell, how do we tell if a number, if a given number is divisible by 4? How can we tell just by looking at it if the given number is divisible by 4? Here's the rule. If, if the last two digits, last two digits are divisible, by 4. I hope you can read that law. If the last two digits are divisible by 4. For example, 340, 348. Is that divisible by 4? The answer is yes it is because 48 is divisible by 4. 48 is divisible by 4. How about 7000, 7004. 7004 is divisible by 4 because the last two digits are 0 and 4 and that makes a 0. Instead of, instead of 0, 4, if, what if you had 7036. Last two digits are 36 and 36 is divisible divisible by 4. Since 36 is divisible by 4, so is the 7036. Let's look at the last one. How do we know if a number is divisible by 5? A number is divisible by 5 if it ends in a 0 or a 5. If the last digit is 0 or a 5, the number is divisible by 5. For example, 3, 3, 4, 5, 7, and then 0, that number is divisible by 5 because it ends in a 0. How about uh, 345,705? That's divisible by 5 because it ends in a 5. As long as the last digit is either a 5 or a 0, it's divisible by 5. Let's do the problem. As I said, the problem that we are about to do, it really wasn't necessary to know this thing, but I find it useful, so I teach my client, because sometimes it comes in quite handy. Problem number four is the one that we skipped, and the problem number four goes something like this. In problem four, we are told that we are going to buy a computer. We are going to buy a computer, and we are told that the computer costs $550. We are further told that the sales tax is six and a half percent. Question is, how much do we have to pay total? Well, in order to figure out how much we need to pay total, if we can figure out what is six and a half percent of 500, once we have the amount of sell stacks, we can add 550 to it and we'll know how much we'll have to pay total. So let's figure it out. We have to figure out six and a half percent of 550. 550. 550 is the cost and 6.5% is the sales tax. So we need to know 6.5% of 550. Let's see what we can do, shall we? 6.5% means 6.5 over 100. That's what percent means. Percent means over 100. Off means times 550. Okay, here's what we're going to do. So instead of writing 550, instead of writing 550, why don't we write 550 as 55 times 10? And now we can use this 10 to get rid of this decimal. 6.5 times 10, we'll have to move the decimal place to the right one space and it'll become 65. So once we multiply this, once we multiply this 6.5 by this 10, it becomes 65. That remains 55. That remains 55. And the bottom we have 100, don't forget that. On the bottom we have 100, which we're going to write as 10 times 10. And you will see the reason in a second. Now we can divide top and bottom by 5 here. 10 divided by 5 is going to give us 2. 
and 55 divided by 5 is going to give us 11. What about 65? Let's divide the bottom by 5 first, that's going to give us 2, and 65 divided by 5. 6 is made up of 1, 5. After we take away 5 from the 6, we have a remainder of 1. 1 goes and joins the 5, becomes a 15, and 15 is made up of 3 fives. One more time. 65 divided by 5, which we are trying to figure out. 6 is made up of 1, 5. After we take away 5 from the 6, we have a remainder of 1. 1 goes and joins the 5, becomes 15, and 15 is made up of 3 fives. Since we divide it top by 5, we must divide the bottom by 5, which was the whole point. Let's do one more time. 65 divided by 5, and this time we're going to do it longhand. Follow the script as I speak, okay? 6, 6 is made up of 1, 5. 6 is made up of 1, 5. After we take away 5 from the 6, we have a remainder of 1. We have a remainder of 1, and that one goes and joins the 5. That one goes and joins the 5. That one goes and joins the 5 and becomes a 15. And 15 is made up of 3 fives. So it's 65. There you go. So now we have to figure out 13 times 11, and on the bottom we have 2 times 2. Let's, let's do it on the top. So we are left with 13 times 11. 13 times 11, right here, 13 times 11, and then 2 times 2. Let's figure out what 13 times 11 is over here. 13 times 11. 11 times 3 is 33, 3, carry 3, 11 times 1 is 11, plus 3 is 14, 143 over 4, there we go, I'm going to erase all of this thing, we don't need any of this now, now the question is, is 143 divisible by 4, to which the answer is no, to which the answer is no, because 43, 143, ends in 43. The last two digits are 43. And 43 is not divisible by 4. But 40 is. We can divide 40 by 4. So what we're going to do is, if you understand that concept, that this number is not divisible by 4, but if we had 140, 40 is divisible by 4. If you, if you understand that concept, then what we can do is, we can write 143 as 140 over 4 plus 3 over 4. Simple enough. Let's divide 140 by 4, let's see what happens, okay? Here you go, one more time, the same routine. We're going to divide top and bottom by 4. 14 is made up of 3 4s. 3 4s are 12. 14 is made up of 3 4s. 3 4s are 12. After we take away 12 from the 14, we have a remainder of 2. That 2 goes and joins a 0 and becomes a 20. And 20 is made up of 5 4s. Since we divided top by 4, we must divide the bottom by 4. Now let's do it one more time. And this time we're going to do it longhand, so you can follow. So you can follow with me. Follow the script. I'm going to present to you the same script one more time. Here we go. 14 is made up of three four. 14. That's why we cross them out together. This 14. 14 is made up of three fours. Three fours are 12. After we take away 12 from the 14, we have a remainder of two. That two goes and joins the zero and becomes a 20. When we cross out this 0, we are not crossing out 0, we are crossing out 20. Because that 2 goes, the remaining 2 goes, the 2 from here goes, it joins the 0, it becomes a 20. And 20 is made up of 5 2's. We were not claiming, when we crossed out the 0, we were not claiming the 0 is made up of 5 4's. That will be silly. It's not a 0, it's a 20. There we go, here we, we have the answer. The answer is 35. Thirty-five dollars and three quarter. That's how much we're going to pay in tax. And of course, the price of the computer itself was five fifty. So that gives us five eighty-five and three quarters. That's how much we're going to pay after we add up the sales tax. Five hundred eighty-five dollars and seventy-five cents, or if you like, three quarters. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye now.